It's August 10, 1548, and spectators from across Italy have come to watch the math debate of the century. On one side we have Lodovico Ferrari. No, not that Ferrari. That won't happen until 350 years later. The young rising star of the math world. Then on the other side, Tartaglia, the stammerer, a well-established mathematician on the other side of Italy. Why here? Why now? 1. Tartaglia felt betrayed by Ferrari's mentor, Girolamo Cardano. Cardano promised that he would not publish Tartaglia's work on the solutions to the algebraic cubic equation. Cardano and Ferrari found a loophole where they used the work of the deceased Scipione del Ferro to publish both the cubic and quartic equation solutions, making them famous. Tartaglia wanted to publicly debate Cardano on those equations, but Ferrari took the opportunity in Cardano's stead. And so here we are. The first day of debating ended, and Tartaglia knew he was beat from Ferrari's equations, and so he left for home that night, giving Ferrari an uncontested win. With such a victory, Ferrari could have chosen any career path with assured success, and he decided to work for the governor of Milan as a tax assessor, basically the IRS at the time. Ferrari retired at age 42, successful and ready to take a relaxing position as a professor in the University of Bologna, living with his widowed sister, Maddalena. Unfortunately, Ferrari died at age 43 from white arsenic poisoning. Some say it was from his sister because all of Ferrari's wealth was transferred to her, to which Maddalena remarried two weeks later, had the money moved to her new husband, and Bye. then he left her, and she died of poverty. So the next time a student complains that math is tiresome, and has no means of making fame or money, you can say, <laughs>